welcome to a new uh, installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. Um, three reviews up this week, the first of which is a game called Sparklight. Uh, let me see. So Sparklight uh, is in... Uh, how do I put this? I don't think we've ever gotten a, like an officially official uh, label for this particular kind of genre. You know, you may hear it like Zelda-like or Zelda clone. A top we down. used to call them adventure games, but that was because they weren't making text adventure games anymore. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, on the web, on the Steam page, it says an action adventure game. Yeah, Which I guess is as good as anything, but um, also this is a roguelike, so it's mixing that into the, uh, and indeed that's kind of one of the big gimmicks of Sparklight. Uh, it's a procedurally generated world. Not necessarily a completely random one, because um, having played um, through the entirety of the game, it's definitely uh, pre-made tiles just assembled randomly. Yeah, I was going to say the procedural chunks are noticeable. Uh-huh. Like, um, you know... It's a, you know, it's a different experience every time in the sense that every time you go... Uh, down into the uh, play field, let's call it. The recognizable rooms are in a different order. Right. Which is good and bad, quite honestly. Um, mainly because this game, uh, like the overall structure is in a central hub, uh, four different bran uh, branching er uh, areas, you know. You, de you know, you touch down in the grasslands and then you will have to go over to the desert or the ice wastelands or the poison swamp. Um, and and um, God, I'm trying to remember what the the last one was. Like, uh, like the fall forest, I guess. Uh, point is, I, you know, I could appreciate the random generation to a point. And that point stopped when I had to go to another area because um, it shuffles those areas, uh, the entrance to those areas as well. And, you know, it's like, okay, I died in the desert. I want to go back to the desert. Sometimes, ah. the entrance, yeah, sometimes the entrance could be literally the next space over. Other times, I could be uh, wasting five, ten minutes getting to the area, and one of the small. Uh, this is one of the smaller issues, sure, but it becomes noticeable when you're actually engaged in the game. Basically, what I'm saying here is this game desperately needed a fast travel system to the other areas, because no, it, it's not fun dealing with the beginning area, especially when you're trying to get to the end of the game. You know, it's like. The enemies are incidental. There's no challenge here. This is this was just busy work. You know, I'm not sure if that's a thing that could be adjusted. You know, maybe with a patch, but it's definitely a thing that I I wouldn't mind seeing. Um. Anyway. Um. Let's see. And uh, the Zelda comparisons don't just. Uh, link up with, like, the graphics and the top-down perspective either. Um, you know, the combat's pretty Zelda. The, uh, this game has items like Zelda, although, once again, the game kind of dropped the ball on the items. Kind of really dropped the ball, if I'm being honest, because they are incidental almost to the point of pointlessness in that I had to, um, or at least some of them were. Like, uh, I'd say the biggest... Useful items were like the permanent upgrades, and even those were still pretty situational. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like uh, there needed to be more opportunities to use the items. Although that might have clashed with the uh, the procedural generation, perhaps. Yeah, you can't have puzzles that require you to use a hook shot if you're not sure if you're going to have a hook shot. Right. I mean, th th there was a certain point where I was expected to have the item, you know, item X or item Y or upgrade Z. But I'm um, like, ultimately, and, you know, using them for combat were uh, was pretty pointless as well, since 
by and large, they didn't do enough damage. Although that depended on your build. Um, you uh -huh. know, now, uh, that's more in the roguelike sector because um, through the course of the game, you get various badges of you know, various sorts, some pretty standard, you know, um, more health, better defense, more attack. Um, these are basically your quality of life upgrades. And, uh, you know, upgrading them requires the currency, you know, the spark light in question is actually the stuff that you get, you know, from enemies, from chests. It's the currency of the game. It's also the thing that's kind of ruining the world. You know, it's like insert critiques of capitalism here. Yeah. Uh, but the, le the, le the Legend of Rupees? Oh, no, wait, that's the Tingle games. Never mind. Mm. I don't think it's making any sort of commentary about mining resources recklessly. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So in terms of overall gameplay, it's pretty standard Zelda stuff, you know, to the point where it felt like, in a few cases, this game was tacking on stuff just for the sake of being in line with Zelda. Like, it probably just should have ditched the items and the puzzles entirely, since they were so minimized anyway. But, uh, once again, a, a minor complaint. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, uh, let's see. You know, the graphical styling is pretty neat. Um, you know, it's like not much to say outside. You know, it looks pretty good. You know, pixel art, hand-drawn stuff. You know, I imagine that's where a major part of the effort goes. Um, you know, it's like... Uh, I suppose I should talk about the biggest problem I had with the game, and that's um, the damage enemies took. Um, you know, it's like this being a roguelike, uh, you will expect some challenge. Now, this game is definitely significantly, significantly less challenging than your typical roguelike, you know, in the sense that I beat the game. I think I spent about 12, 13 hours with it. Yeah. Um, but it's how it, uh, mitigate, it has, it's how it deals with the difficulty, especially, um, say the third stage in um de uh, bullet sponges damage sponges you know the enemy the enemy's taken ever increasing amount of damage do uh, you have a way of ever increasing your offensive capability uh yes and no you know um you do get power ups um you know you, you do get the, this wrench but they're really really uncommon and each notch up only takes down things down a hit, you know. Ah. Uh, and you know. So they're still overall become problematically difficult to actually kill. Um, problematically tedious, you know, especially with some of the bosses. If you're not like properly powered up, I guess, um, because you know I did take take a look at some videos versus where I was like. You know, I had a silver wrench at, at the end there, but, uh, you know, that's, the, you know, that's, and it took, like, until the last portion of the game to get a second one. And, like I said, the, the way you upgrade is fusion. You know, um, uh, so you couldn't get a silver wrench plus one or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it made the, you know, it, it wasn't like the bosses took a long time to death. It, it, to the point where, you know, I know the patterns, you know, it's like, you know, I'm losing because I'm getting bored with things because this fight's been going on for 10 minutes for 15 minutes. And this boss isn't that interesting. That's, that's bad challenge. Okay. I'm not sure. You know, once again, this is probably another one of those things that's in line with the randomization with the, with the, types of badges you find but you know this was my experience you know it, it's like uh let's see the game has a goodly amount of side quests that i honestly didn't care about um let's see i suppose 
in terms of what I liked, you know, the overall presentation, the overall gameplay, you know, everything was pretty solid. It's just, you know, when you started to get into the bones of things, the, you know, the littler issues became bigger. You know, um, let's see, uh, pricing. Let's see. Well, the game ha is available for all platforms. Um, but Steam has uh, a few extras in that it has the soundtrack. Um, you know, the game itself clocks in at twenty four ninety nine. Uh, the deluxe edition is twenty nine ninety nine, and the original soundtrack is nine ninety nine. Uh, the soundtrack itself was um, nice. You know, not really something I'd probably listen to outside of the game, but. You know, if you go for the soundtrack, you won't be disappointed, I think. Like, but overall, 25 to $30 for this kind of game? No. I, I can't recommend it at that price. It's like, if it were 15 to 20 yes. But I don't think this game has a, quite enough content, quite enough, uh, oh, you know, meat on the bones to justify... Twenty-five, thirty dollars. You know, still a solid game. Just uh, wait for a sale. In that case, um, any other questions about the game? Not that I can think of. Me neither. Yeah, it looks fairly fun to me, but I do imagine, or I have experienced games where the amount of damage you can do versus the amount of hits enemies take has been badly balanced and that's never super fun. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. defense can also be an issue, but defense badges are a lot more common uh, and a lot, just a lot easier to accrue and fuse and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, like anyway, so yeah, solid game. Um, you know, seven out of 10 on the arbitrary scale of arbitration. Um, um, anyway, uh, so that'll about do it for Sparklight. Be sure to tune in after the break as we will be reviewing a game called War Room. <laughs> <laughs> 